Welcome back to another episode of Smooth Brain EDH, where we make the smoothest plays with the biggest brains. We're back with some more gameplay for you guys, featuring some brand new decks and some old ones as well. So let's hop right into it and see who's playing what. First up, we have Shelby returning with Ivy, Gleeful Spell Thief. This deck plans on abusing Ivy's ability to get free value, whether that be through copying instants or sorceries, aura spells, or even some mutate spells. He'll keep an opening hand of a snow forest, bark channel pathway, Simic growth chamber, Twinning Staff, Cyclonic Rift, Boon Seder, and Beast Whisperer. Up next we have Sam on Wilson with the background of Cultist of the Absolute. This esteemed gentleman plays a Voltron and also a token generation style deck, so not only can he win through commander damage, but potentially also through flooding the board. Sam will keep an opening hand of a Forest, Bonder's Enclave, Nurturing Peatland, Soul Ring, Beast Within, Birds of Paradise, and Jadar, Ghoul Caller of Nefalia. Up next is Chandler on the Ever-Changing Dane. He built this deck to be an Esper Reanimator style deck. He plans to reanimate some massive threats and then use Ever-Changing Dane's ability to dodge spot removal and potentially as a sack outlet as well. He keeps an opening hand of Underground Sea, Command Tower, Arcane Signet, Talisman of Hierarchy, Animate Dead, Smuggler's Share, and Ledger Shredder. And last but not least, we have Ethan returning with the OG Jund Lands deck. Lord Windgrace. This deck is all about getting lands on the battlefield and in the graveyard, and then from the graveyard back to the battlefield, and so on and so forth. And when you pair it with some powerful land synergies, this deck is unstoppable. Ethan will keep an opening hand of a snow-covered swamp, a bloodstained mire, glacial chasm, field of the dead, jeweled lotus, nature's lore, and death right shaman. We're about to hop right into the gameplay, but before we do, go down and leave a comment for us, letting us know who you think is going to win this game. And while you're down there, don't forget to check out all our links in the description. We've got all the deck lists for you guys to check out, another channel for you guys to listen to our podcast, a Patreon link if you're wanting some exclusive benefits and a chance to help us out, and an affiliate link with Dragon Shield, so if you're looking to pick up any MTG products, be sure to check that out. And finally, one last thing. If you entered our 10,000 subscriber giveaway, please check your email. You might have won, and we'll be reaching out to contact you. You've got 48 hours to respond, or we're picking someone else. But that's enough talk for now. Let's hop right into the gameplay. Looks like Chandler wins the die roll, and he plays Underground Sea, and then passes to Ethan. Ethan plays a Bloodstained Mire, and will immediately fetch with it, and then shock in a Stomping Ground to play a Deathrite Shaman. The turn is then passed to Shelby, and he plays a Snow Forest, and then passes to Sam. Sam will play his own forest, and then he'll cast his Birds of Paradise, and then pass back to Chandler. Chandler plays his Command Tower, and then will tap for two to cast the Arcane Signet he has. He'll then pass the turn to Ethan. And Ethan plays his Snow-Covered Swamp, and then he'll free cast his Jeweled Lotus. He then cracks the Jeweled Lotus for three green, and then will tap for a black and a red to cast Lord Windgrace on turn two. He then downticks his Planeswalker to return Bloodstained Mire to the battlefield, which he'll immediately crack again for a mountain. After this, he'll tap the mountain and his Deathrite Shaman, exiling Bloodstained Mire, to cast a Nature's Lore. He searches up a Zia Taurus Proving Ground to the battlefield, and then will pass the turn to Shelby. Shelby just plays his Tide Channel Pathway, and then he'll cast Ivy, and then pass to Sam. Sam plays Bonder's Enclave, and then will tap it for its colorless to cast Soul Ring. He'll then tap the Soul Ring and his Forest to cast his commander, Wilson. And then with one leftover colorless, he'll tap his Birds of Paradise for a black and cast Jadar. Then he'll move to his instep, make a zombie, and then pass the turn to Chandler. Chandler will play a basic Plains as land for turn, then will tap for two to cast Talisman of Hierarchy. And then after that, he'll tap for three more to cast Smuggler's Share. The turn is passed to Ethan after this, and he'll start by upticking Windgrace to discard a Dark Depths, drawing two cards. After this, he'll tap for three to cast Kodama's Reach. He finds a forest to his hand and a snow forest to the battlefield. He'll then play the forest as land for turn, and then will tap for two to cast Farseek. He finds a tapped Sheltered Thicket to the battlefield, and then he'll pass the turn. On instep, Smuggler Shell will trigger, drawing Chandler a card and making him a treasure. The turn is now Shelby's, he'll play Simic Growth Chamber, picking up his snow forest, and then he'll move to combat, swing two at Lord Windgrace, then he'll pass the turn to Sam, and he has to discard a Gem Razor. Sam will start his turn off with a Nurturing Peatland, and then he casts a Finhorn Elves. And then he'll cast his background, Cultus of the Absolute. He'll then move to combat, and he'll swing his 2-2 Decayed Zombie at Lord Windgrace, and then he'll swing Wilson at Chandler. Ethan will jump with Deathrite Shaman, and Chandler just has to take the 5 Commander. The Decayed Zombie is sacrificed at the end of combat, and then Sam will move to end step and make another one. The turn is now Chandler's, and Chandler will start by playing a Fabled Passage. He'll then tap for 2 to cast his Ledger Shredder, and then he'll fetch with his Fabled Passage for a basic island. He'll then tap for 3 to cast Frantic Search. This is his second spell this turn, so he'll get to connive first. 
so he draws a card and then discards on burial rites. Frantic Search will then resolve, so he draws two and then discards a Plains and Ashen Rider and then untaps three lands. He'll then tap for two to cast Animate Dead to bring back the Ashen Rider and choosing to exile Wind Grace upon its ETB. After this, he'll pass the turn to Ethan. And Ethan starts off with a Field of the Dead, and it'll trigger when it enters. Ethan will then tap for three and cast a Wheel of Fortune. And Shelby decides he wants to cast Swan Song on it, saying that he likes his hand, and everyone else has dumped their hand, so it's probably a good idea for them to not refill. And so the spell is countered, Ethan gets a 2-2 with flying, and then he'll pass the turn to Shelby. And on his turn, Shelby will replay his Snow Forest, and then he'll tap for 4 to cast his Beast Whisperer. He'll then attempt to pass turn to Sam, but he'll stop on end step to crack his Nurturing Peatland and draw a card. Then he moves to his upkeep, where he sacrifices his 2-2 Decayed Zombie to his Cultist of the Absolute. He'll then play another Forest's Land for turn, and then he moves to combat, swinging for 5 Commander this time at Shelby, who just takes it. He'll then move to end step, make another 2-2 Decayed Zombie, and then he'll pass the turn to Chandler who starts off with another basic island as land for turn, and then he'll tap for three, and he'll cast the ever-changing Dane. And then the turn is passed to Ethan, who starts his turn off by tapping for three and casting Rada, Heart of Keld. He plays Tranquil Thicket, Field Trigger, and then he'll pass the turn. Shelby will play a basic forest, and then he'll tap for three to cast a Kodama's Reach. He finds an island to the battlefield and his hand, and then he'll pass the turn to Sam, who activates Bonder's Enclave on his end step to draw a card. And Chandler also gets a Smuggler's Share Treasure. Then on Sam's upkeep, he has to sacrifice his 2 2 Decayed Zombie again. Then he'll play and crack a Fabled Passage to find a Swamp. After this, he taps for 3 and casts Phyrexian Arena. He'll then tap for 4 and cast Parallel Lives. Ledger Shredder will connive, and Chandler will draw a card and discard Massacre Worm. After this, Sam will move to combat, and this time he decides to put 5 Commander on Ethan, who does not block it. Sam then moves to end step, Jadar and Smuggler's share trigger, Chandler's resolves first because he's not an active player, and then Chandler will hold priority in response to Jadar. He pays 1 to his commander to sacrifice Ashen Rider, making his commander a copy of it, and then there's a die trigger. He debates between Parallel Lives and Field of the Dead, but ultimately decides to go with the field, seeing his lands are much harder to get rid of, and so the Field of the Dead is exiled. Now on Chandler's turn, he'll start off by playing a tapped Agadim the Undercrypt. After this, he'll just tap for 7 mana and hard cast a Shieldred the Whispering One. He'll then move to combat and swings for 5 commander in the air at Sam. And while Sam could trade with his Grizzly, he's not wanting to lose him yet, so he just takes the 5 commander. Chandler will then pass the turn to Ethan, and Ethan sacrifices one of his 2-2 zombies on his upkeep. He'll then peek off the top of his library and he'll play Undergrowth Stadium thanks to Rada. He'll then move to combat and he'll swing Rada at Sam. Sam just jumps with his Finhorn Elves and then will move to Ethan's second main. After a decent amount of thinking, Ethan decides to just go ahead and pass the turn. On his end step, Shelby will cast a Brainstorm, drawing three and putting two back. And on his upkeep, Shelby will sacrifice Ivy to Shieldred. Shelby will then play an Island, and then he'll just pass the turn. Sam has to sacrifice both of his zombies to two sacrifice triggers, and then he'll draw a card and lose a life. He then taps for five and casts Moldervine Reclamation. After this, he moves to combat and decides to swing for five Commander at Chandler, who'll just take it. Sam will then pass the turn, uh, Jadar will trigger, and Smuggler Share draws Chandler a card. Chandler then has a Shieldred trigger on his upkeep, and he returns Massacre Worm. While it's a little late to stop the worm from hitting the battlefield, Sam decides to tap for three, and he'll cast Beast Within on Shieldred to make sure Chandler can't keep looping creatures. Chandler responds, however, by paying one, sacrificing Shieldred, and making an effort changing Shieldred. The Massacre Worm's ability then resolves, and Ethan loses two creatures and four life, and then Sam will lose 4 creatures and 8 life, but then he'll gain back 4 and draw 4 cards. After this, Chandler will move to combat, and he'll swing for 6 commander at Shelby, who will just take the damage. He then drops the legendary Bog Ethan, exiling his graveyard, and most importantly, that damn Dark Depths, that thing's scary. The turn is then passed to Ethan, who has to sacrifice Rod on his upkeep, and Chandler misses a Massacre Worm trigger. Ethan will then tap for 7 mana, and recast Lord Windgrace. He'll then uptick Windgrace to discard a Nurturing Peatland, and draw 2 cards. After this, he'll play a Maze of Ith. Ethan will then move to his end step, and there's a Smuggler's Share trigger. Shelby will respond to it by overloading Cyclonic Rift. Everything's bounced, and then Chandler's trigger resolves, drawing him a card. We then move to Shelby's turn, and he'll play a basic forest, and then he'll recast Ivy. Beast Whisperer draws him a card, and then he'll tap for 3 to cast Twinning Staff. And then the turn is passed to Sam. Sam will play a Yavi Maya's land for turn, and then he'll recast his Soul Ring. He'll then recast Parallel Lives, and then Wilson, and then passes the turn to Chandler. And he has to discard Forest and Bloodsoak Champion during cleanup. 
Now on Chandler's turn, he'll play a Prismatic Vista as land for turn. He'll tap it for a green, and then he'll Bajooka Bog for a black to recast Arcane Signet. He then recasts Talisman of Hierarchy, and then he'll cast a Felwar Stone as well. After this, he recasts Smuggler's Share and Ledger Shredder, and then he'll pass the turn to Ethan. Ethan, who has no creatures to play himself, decides that nobody can have creatures right now, so he casts a Chain Reaction. After wiping the board, Ethan will play and crack over to Catacombs for a tapped Blood Crypt. He'll then recast Windgrace and downtake him returning Nurturing Peatland and Verdant Catacombs, and then he'll re-crack Verdant Catacombs, this time just finding a basic forest. He'll then pass the turn to Shelby, Chandler gets a treasure on his end step to Smuggler's Share, and then Shelby will play a Command Tower as land for turn. He then taps her 7 and drops Nezahal the Primal Tide, then casts Storm Chaser Drake, and then we'll pass the turn to Sam, and Sam starts his turn off with an Assault Suit. Nezahal Trigger, he then recasts Cultist of the Absolute, and then we'll just pass the turn to Chandler. Also another Nezahal Trigger, and a Smuggler's Share Trigger, since Shelby did draw two cards this turn. Chandler plays a Castle Vantress as land for turn, and then we'll tap for two to cast Swiftfoot Boots. Nezahal Trigger, he then taps for three to recast his commander, Dane, and then he taps for seven to cast Ancient Brass Dragon. He then cracks his treasure to attempt to equip his boots to it, but Sam has a response. He free casts Force of Vigor, exiling Abrupt Decay, targeting the Swiftfoot boots and the Smuggler's Share. It'll resolve and also nez a whole trigger. Now tapped out, Chandler will just pass the turn to Ethan, and Ethan will start by upticking his commander to discard Glacial Chasm and draw two cards. He then taps for eight to drop Ugin the Spirit Dragon, and he'll immediately minus seven him to exile all colored permanents, CMC seven or less. Shelby will draw a card off the Ugin, and then in response to the minus 7, he'll discard 3 cards to exile Nezahal till the end of the turn. After this, Ethan will crack his Nurturing Peatland to draw a card, and then he'll pass the turn to Shelby who gets Nezahal back on end step. Then on his first main, he'll recast Ivy, and after this he'll bestow Boon Seder onto Nezahal, which will copy and go to Ivy, and Twinning Staff will give him an extra copy, which he also puts on Ivy. After this, he moves to combat, and he'll swing Nezahal for 11 at Sam, who has to take it. The turn is then passed to Sam, who starts off by recasting Wilson. He then equips his Wilson with Assault Suit, and then swings for 4 Commander of Chandler, who has to take it. The turn is then passed to Chandler, who will immediately tap for 6 on his turn to cast a Consecrated Sphinx. He'll then flashback his Unburial Rites to get Shieldred the Whispering One back to the battlefield. Nezahal will trigger, and then so will Consecrated Sphinx. Chandler then plays a Polluted Delta as land for turn, and then passes the turn to Ethan. Consecrated Sphinx trigger and draw step, and then Ethan will play a Tireless Provisioner. And then he'll play a Cinderglade as land for turn. Landfall triggers, and he makes a food token. He then taps for 9 mana to recast Windgrace, Nezahal, and Consecrated Sphinx trigger, and then he down takes Windgrace to return Glacial Chasm and Nurturing Peatland to the battlefield. He sacrifices Tranquil Thicket to the Glacial Chasm, and then he'll make another food and a treasure token. And after this, the turn is passed to Shelby. On his upkeep, he has a Shieldred trigger, but he's got a few responses first. He flashes in Most Wanted on Nezahal, putting two of them on Ivy, and then he'll cast Leap targeting Nezahal, copying it twice with Ivy again, drawing him three cards, and Chandler six. Shelby then discards three cards, exiling Nezahal till end of turn, and Boonsader will fall off as a creature. So then when the Shieldred trigger resolves, he'll sacrifice the Boonsader. Then he'll move to his draw, and Chandler draws two. Now in his main phase, Shelby will mutate Trumpeting Gnar on top of Ivy, but forgets to make the 3-3. He then moves to combat and swings for 15 in the air at Chandler, who gladly chumps with his Consecrated Sphinx. The turn is then passed to Sam, who has a creature that can't be sacrificed, and then he'll tap for 3 and cast Fight Rigging. After exiling a card under it, Sam will then recast Cultist of the Absolute. After this, he moves to combat and puts a counter on Wilson, and then gets to play the card underneath his Fight Rigging. It's a Bajooka Bog, and when it enters the battlefield, it targets Ethan. What? Oh, uh, Chandler? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Sam then considers swinging at Chandler for that lethal commander damage, but he bluffs into the speed removal, so he decides to swing it at Shelby. And before damage, Ethan will pay 3 mana to Blood Rush Rubble Hulk, giving Wilson plus 15, plus 15 until end of turn. And he does pay the 2 mana and 3 life for the ward. There are no responses around the table, so unfortunately, this is enough to kill Shelby. Sam then attempts to pass turn, and Chandler stops him on end step to cast Consider beating a Rafine's tower and drawing a card. Now in his turn, Shieldred has nothing to reanimate, and Chandler plays Castle Lockthwing. He'll tap for two to cast Lazav, and he surveils one, leaving it at the top. He'll then tap for two to cast Mindstone, and then he'll immediately pay one to crack it to draw the top card. He then casts the card that he drew, which was Incarnation Technique. Sam has the least scary graveyard, so he demonstrates it targeting him. Sam mails five cards, and one of them is a Mazarek, so he puts it onto the battlefield. Chandler resolves his first copy, which only mills over a Phyrexian Dreadnought, which dies as soon as it hits the battlefield. His second copy only mills a Body Launderer, which he has to reanimate. 
Kind of an unlucky incarnation technique. Chandler then passes turn and has to discard 6 lands and a Grim Heart Specs. The turn is then passed to Ethan, who has to sacrifice his tireless provisioner. Cumulative upkeep also triggers, and Ethan loses two life. He then upticks Wind Grace to discard a swamp and draw two. He'll then play Yavi Maya and then taps out to cast Torment of Hellfire. X is equal to 14. Sam will discard four cards, then sacrifice Fight Rigging, Soul Ring, and Mazarek, then loses 18 life. Chandler sacrifices his three mana rocks, Body Launderer, and Lazav, and then discards three cards, and will lose 15. Mazarek sees seven permanents get sacrificed, so Wilson will get seven counters. Body Launderer's Connive trigger is missed, but its reanimation trigger will bring back Grim Horror Specs. And new notable creatures in Chandler's graveyards are Massacre Worm and Clever Impersonator. The turn is then passed to Sam, who starts off by activating Bonder's Enclave to draw a card. He then considers swinging at Chandler just to kill him, but he doesn't know how he's going to beat Ethan with that Glacial Chasm out, so he just passes the turn, asking Chandler not to Swamp Walk over to him. Chandler will stop on end step and activates Castle Lockthwain, drawing a card and losing 4 life. And so now in his turn, Chandler returns Lazav with his Shieldred trigger. He bends a Demir Signet with his Surveil, and then casts an Unmarked Grave, finding Archon of Cruelty to the graveyard. He then taps for 5 and casts Karmic Guide, returning the Archon to the battlefield. He has to crack his Prismatic Vista for a planes to do this. He'll gain 3 life and draw a card, and then has Ethan lose 3 life, discard a card, and sacrifice Wind Grace. The turn is then passed to Ethan, who has a Cumulative Upkeep trigger, and he has to pay 4 life. He'll then sacrifice his Nurturing Peatland to draw a card, and then he'll recast Wind Grace to uptick him, discarding a Windswept Teeth, and draw 2 cards. After this, he plays Command Tower, and then just passes the turn to Sam, who starts off by playing Windswept Teeth. After this, he casts and equips Sword of Hearth and Home onto Wilson, and then will move to combat, swinging lethal at Chandler. Chandler will respond by casting Cyclonic Rift, targeting Wilson, and he will pay the 2 mana and the 3 life for the ward. And so, Wilson is bounced, and Sam will pass the turn to Chandler. And Chandler returns Massacre Worm to the battlefield with Shieldred's trigger. And he will pay the Karmic Guide's upkeep cost. He'll then attempt to move to combat and swing the Archon of Cruelty at Sam, but at the beginning of combat step, Ethan will Assassin's Trophy the Archon, not willing to lose any more life to its trigger. So the Archon will die, and Chandler will draw a card from Grim Horus Max, and then find a basic swamp to the battlefield untapped. But thanks to Assassin's Trophy giving Chandler that swamp, he actually has exactly 8 mana now, which he will tap to make Lazav a copy of Archon of Cruelty. So still at the beginning of combat, Chandler will then declare Lazav as an attacker at Sam, and he'll point the trigger at Ethan. Sam unfortunately has no way to live from this, so he will die, and then Chandler will pass the turn to Ethan, who cracks a food token on instep to gain 3 life, and then he'll pay for cumulative upkeep. And then you'll never guess what Ethan top decks. That's right, it's a blasphemous act. Yeah, Ethan's found every board wipe in his deck this game. After it resolves, there's 4 Grim Horror Specs triggers, and then Ethan will cast Scoot Swarm. He then casts Ramanop Excavator, which is absolutely terrifying because it presents Glacial Chasm loops. And that Scoot Swarm is a ticking time bomb. So, Ethan will play Nurturing Peatland from his graveyard, doubling his swarm. He then passes the turn to Chandler, who just decides to hard cast a Jin Kataxis, because why not? He'll then attempt to move to Insta, but Ethan holds priority on second main phase, and he Chaos Warps away Jin Kataxis. The flipped card is a Luminous Broodmoth, and then Chandler casts Esper Sentinel, and then will pass the turn to Ethan. A food token is cracked on Insta. On Ethan's upkeep, he sacrifices Glacial Chasm. He then floats a green with a forest and then replays the chasm, sacrificing the forest he tapped, and then he'll tap for 13 mana to recast Lord Windgrace. Also, his swarm doubled when he played the glacial chasm. After this, he downticks Lord Windgrace, returning two lands to the battlefield, and of course this doubles his swarm twice. He then passes the turn to Chandler, who prays the top part of his library can help him out, but it doesn't, so he'll just concede. So today's winner is Ethan and Windgrace. Way to go, guys! Well, 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 there we have it. Ethan is the victor today, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, I have been editing this video all night, and I'm extremely tired. So thank you all so much for watching. Something, something, check the links in the video. Something, something, check your email if you entered the giveaway. And as always, you guys, have a smooth day.